Welcome to the Toolkit for Schools Applying for the Research Ireland Curious Minds Platinum Award. Have you downloaded and reviewed the Platinum Award guidelines from the awards section of the website? Have you contacted your facilitator to discuss your application? Let's start with a bit of background. The Platinum Curious Minds Award started as the badge of STEM excellence. This level of award is to acknowledge schools that have achieved gold awards and would like to undertake a school-wide development project to further enhance STEM practice while raising awareness of and interest in STEM throughout the school community, specifically among pupils, teachers, parents and guardians. The Platinum Award is a significant step up in terms of effort from a gold award. While schools are encouraged to achieve a gold award annually to recognise continued commitment to STEM education, Schools are advised to go for the platinum level when there is a specific outcome they want to achieve to improve STEM education in the school in a particular year. Applicants will be required to identify an area of STEM teaching and learning that they want to improve, make and implement a plan to achieve the desired outcomes, and demonstrate through reflection from learners, teachers and parents what has changed and improved for them. That is the impact of the project. As this is a school-wide development project, Research Ireland envisages that this is something schools would aim to do every few years rather than each year. Annual applications for the Platinum Award would be capped at 30 schools, so sign up early to avoid disappointment. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. In primary school, children experience STEM through subject areas such as Science, Maths and Design and Make. STEM education involves a cross-disciplinary approach that builds on the understanding developed in science and maths and be integrated across a range of subjects. The focus of the Platinum Award is on raising awareness and excitement among students, teachers, parents and members of the public of the role and value of STEM in everyday life and its application to real world problem solving. By increasing public awareness of STEM, Research Ireland hopes to foster a greater understanding of the value that STEM offers to Irish society and to promote a positive attitude to careers in STEM. To be eligible to apply for a Platinum Award, the school must have achieved a Gold Award or a plaque of STEM at least once previously. All classes in the school must participate in the Platinum Award. You can register your school's intention to apply for a Platinum Award through the Curious Minds homepage at www.curiousminds.ie. Please note that only 30 schools can participate in the Platinum Awards on a first come first served basis. Research Ireland will provide all award applicants with further details and support and the application process involves the following steps. Start by completing the pre-Platinum Award application form online, outlining the outcomes your school would like to achieve by the deadline given. Complete steps one to five in the same way as you would do if compiling your log of evidence for your Gold Award. As this is the highest award level, submissions for steps one to five must be complete and include all of the necessary evidence and be of a high standard to be considered for a Platinum Award. Reviewers will not go back to applicants for additional information after submission of a platinum application. Engage with the Research Ireland facilitator assigned to your school to support you in your application. Schools found this saved them time and research shows that schools that avail of their support are far more likely to be successful in their application. Complete the full Platinum Award form on Sesame, the online awards platform, outlining how your STEM work contributed to achieving your selected outcomes relating to raising STEM awareness and what has changed and improved for teachers, pupils and parents as a result. To achieve a Platinum Award, schools will need to design and implement a STEM development project in addition to completing the criteria for a Gold Award where they give evidence of the STEM learning carried out. The STEM development project starts with the school identifying an area of STEM teaching and learning that the school would like to improve through research or self-evaluation. Once you've established where you are now in terms of STEM awareness, you'll need to identify outcomes you want to achieve to enhance this. You'll then make a plan of action to achieve the stated outcomes and using reflections from pupils, teachers and parents, show what has changed and improved for them in terms of STEM awareness as a result of the actions that you have taken. So let's start by asking where are we now in terms of STEM teaching and learning as a school 
and how aware and involved are parents? Have you identified, possibly through school self-evaluation or school planning, areas of STEM teaching and learning that the school would like to improve? Do some research, like focus groups or surveys among pupils, teachers and parents to gather evidence of where you are now and what you want to improve. The Department of Education have lots of useful resources to help with focus groups, interviews and other sorts of research. See the link on the slide. One Platinum Awarded School did surveys and focus groups with pupils. Their findings indicated that to successfully embed STEM knowledge, all classes must actively be involved in creating, planning, sharing and improving STEM activities and experiences. By sending a survey to parents, another school gained insights into what parents thought about STEM and their children's learning. This helped them take action to increase parents' understanding of the STEM skills that children are developing in class such as curiosity, creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. So what is your research telling you about the current situation? Is there scope to develop the children's STEM skills, for example, problem solving, or to enhance a specific area like ICT or coding? Is there a need to focus on girls engaging with STEM? Would teachers like more support to use more inquiry-based learning approaches or to collaborate more on STEM teaching? Could more targeted communication with parents help them to understand the value of the STEM work their children are involved in and better equip them to support their child's learning? These are just some examples of opportunities that might exist. Your assessment of where you are now will be uniquely relevant to your school. You need to prioritise what you find out about the needs of each group to develop your outcomes. Now it's time to choose clear outcomes that you want to achieve. It's not just about doing activities. An outcome is the result of taking an action. What has improved and for whom as a result? Based on your research findings, consider what outcomes, changes or improvements you want to achieve for children, teachers and parents and why. You can refer to Looking at Our School 2022, a quality framework for primary schools and special schools and the STEM Education Policy and Implementation Plan for Ideas. An important function of these standards is to assist schools in identifying the areas of their practice that are effective or highly effective, to identify and prioritise the areas where improvement is needed and to help chart the improvement journey. So how will you achieve your outcomes? You'll need a realistic plan of what measures you will introduce for pupils, teachers and parents to achieve your desired outcomes. We have some examples from previous years to get you thinking. But remember, it's critical that the outcomes you choose are specific and relevant to the needs you've identified in your own school. One of the previously awarded schools chose the objective of children being able to ask questions and suggest possible solutions competently, risking incorrect responses and accepting that mistakes can be part of the process. Another school outlined the STEM outcomes they chose and the actions they would take to achieve them in a clear and concise way. Teaching staff nurtured all practical opportunities for STEM learning inside and outside the school. They committed to STEM CPD and shared professional STEM knowledge to enhance and expand pupils' learning outcomes and experiences. They set out to successfully embed STEM knowledge by all classes being actively involved in creating, planning, sharing and improving STEM activities and experiences through visible hands-on discovery and links to the local STEM community. A range of actions were undertaken to achieve this outcome, including integrating STEM into long-term planning, cross-curricular activities, promoting inquiry and regular showcasing and show and tell. While the school used examples of the children's work to illustrate some of the outcomes, the emphasis was on what had changed for pupils rather than showcasing the work done. The school also linked the local STEM community to support STEM learning and to ensure relevance for their pupils. Based on research findings, one awarded school selected an outcome of increasing parents' understanding of the STEM skills that children are developing, including curiosity, creativity, collaboration, communication and critical thinking. They took a range of actions to achieve this. 
another school communicated with parents about STEM to promote understanding. One school used the theme of plastics to achieve their objective of giving children opportunities to use and apply STEM knowledge, understanding and skills across the curriculum and in real world contexts. Reflections from children, teachers and parents demonstrate what changed for them as a result. You'll need to show us what has changed or improved for all three audiences, pupils, teachers and parents, as a result of the work undertaken to achieve the outcomes you selected. Feedback and reflections can be gathered from learners, teachers and parents using a series of questions in surveys or interviews, written, recorded or filmed, or at open days or STEM showcases in the school. Some schools gathered parents' reflections via email. Reflections can be presented in the form of written reflections, quotes and photos, videos, audio files, transcripts from interviews, or before and after survey results. When submitting your application on Sesame, please complete a summary of what has been achieved and what has changed under the particular question headings provided on the platform. Use the PowerPoint template to upload the individual reflections from pupils, teachers and parents in the format of your choice. For a successful application, it's important to connect with your assigned advisor early in the process to ensure you have a clear idea of what's required and that you're concentrating your efforts in the right direction. When you're compiling the questions to seek feedback and reflections, include open-ended questions to gather more information and avoid one-word answers. It may be useful to use the same questions and format at the beginning and the end of the process. This will allow for better comparison and show progression. Ensure the questions asked are relevant to your chosen outcomes. When submitting feedback, be certain the reflections provided are not repetitive, but rather show a range of answers to different questions. Using pupil reflections, demonstrate that you have achieved your outcome. What has changed for pupils? Are they working more scientifically? What skills have they strengthened? Ensure the comparison of feedback at the start and the end of the process clearly highlights progression. You must include reflections from a selection of classes. Here are some examples of how learner reflections might look. Using teacher reflections demonstrate that you have achieved your outcome. What's changed for teachers in the areas of pedagogy, confidence, enthusiasm for STEM learning and collaboration. Remember, this is a whole school effort, so you must include reflections from a selection of teachers across all class groupings. Here are some examples of how teacher reflections might look. Using parents' reflections demonstrates that you've achieved your outcome. What's changed for parents? How are parents involved in helping you achieve your desired outcomes? Are they more enthusiastic about STEM learning now? Have parents a greater understanding of the relevance of STEM in real world contexts and possible STEM career pathways for their children? Ensure when you're developing parent questionnaires or interview questions that you include space for open-ended comments, as these comments may often lend themselves for use as parent reflections. Here are some examples of possible parent reflections. Here's an example of how you might use before and after questions to demonstrate change and progress toward achieving your chosen outcomes. In each case, the first question requires a yes or no answer and can be used to record percentages. The second question is open-ended, which gives more information and generates answers that can be used as reflections. Platinum Award applicants are appointed a facilitator who will offer advice on their application shortly after they sign up for the award. There will also be a Platinum Award briefing session online and a toolkit and guidance available on gathering reflections. 
applicants are strongly encouraged to avail of these supports to guide them through the application process. Have you downloaded and reviewed the Platinum Award guidelines from the awards section of the website? Have you contacted your facilitator to discuss your application? Here's a recap of the key steps in the process to achieving a Platinum Award. We wish all schools the best of luck with their applications.